Hey, what's up, everybody? So this is going to be a Eurasian Revenge game, and I'm going to have it in Fast Forward, so it's going to be called a Mistakes game. What mistakes not to make. And some people call it error minimization, and that's one of the technical ways to get good at the game, is to reduce your error. So I'm going to have it in Fast Forward until the part where you make a mistake, and I slow it down, rather than just cut into it. So boom, boom, boom. So he's going to have a IV defense, and the Soviet's going to go for a 2 War Factory 3 minor rush. And he actually has a really good build order to do it. And eventually, after he gets a bunch more miners, and he's going to get a third war factory. And a couple more refineries. So, watch what happens here. So, he actually, what he did is he... Good pillbox placement. What he does is he wanted to deploy the GIs. He meant to deploy the GIs, and he accidentally clicked on the IVs and deployed. So, that's one mistake to make. Um, When you're doing an IV defense, you really got to have good control. This, he actually does have good control, but he does make mistakes. Even really good players do make mistakes. And that's something, I mean, it's kind of a kink that you, everybody has to work out. Um, so what happened right there is he actually saved his ass by moving the miners away. But it could have been worse. He could have lost a miner. Remember, losing one miner early game is a big, bad deal. It's a big deal. So I notice when I say he's... The yellow is building up more miners, and he's continuing to pressure. And if you watch some other people's YouTubes, they're going to show, like, a Soviet that's not going to pressure. But see how the Soviet's trying to maintain constant pressure on him? You could tell that this is a good Soviet. He's not just, like, waiting until he gets a whole bunch of tanks and rush. If he did that, then the, then the allied player could just go, like, three minus from War Factory and just get Mirage on a Battle Fortress and win the game. And even, like, a, a War Purifier and spy him. Uh, but, I mean, if you're playing against a so good Soviet like this... He's gonna try to kill you. So anyway, he's got the uh, battle lab. Now watch. He's gonna attack from the bottom. But here's another thing: when you when you really point, he's making out of a different barracks. So his battle fortress. When he's if he makes a battle fortress, his his guarding GIs are gonna be in a wrong spot. So watch what happens. Boom boom. He's this guarding GIs O or K temporarily to, to, to defend like that. But eventually, you know, you don't want to have you don't want to have infantry hanging around when you're against Soviet because he doesn't have desolators later. But you know, G Guardian GIs just like here and there are actually, you know, temporarily in okay defense or even a good defense if he just like goes all over the place and a freaking smash up the rhino tanks. No, so much this. When you have a defensive style game, you don't want to beat him into the middle until you're well, well prepared. You want to camp kind of as long as possible. I see beating him in the middle, he lost pop one, two, three tanks. And notice how slow with the battle fortress, that's another mistake. So mistake one, deploying the GI. Make, mistake two was meeting in the middle when you're not prepared, when you want to camp a little bit longer. And mistake three was not paying attention to the battle fortress, even though you did have the guardian GIs, you could them right away immediately. So those are three mistakes, and usually the um, player, usually the LA's player, the, the Great Britain player, usually beats the Soviet. I'm saying not all the time, but more often than not. So make sure you don't make those big mistakes. If you want to beat a pro at this game, don't make. It just takes practice. Like don't make this mistake. So anyway. Now you see, I have it in two times fast forward now. So you see he's going to do the same thing. And usually just Sophie to try to run over your GIs with a flag truck or he will use dogs or something like that. So he does the same build almost every time, which, I mean, I don't have a problem with it because it's pretty much, you know, get pretty much really a good build. I mean, if you've seen me do something like that on dry heat, rush two war edges and build up more miners, something like that is done here. I mean, that wall is okay. Not, I mean, not, not a bad idea. It slows them down a little bit if you want to delay the game. But remember, if you're trying to delay the game as long as possible... Crap. If you're trying to delay the game, you're not, you don't want to let him like, come up on you like that. I notice how the Soviet actually penetrated him. 
But I like to make some grizzly tanks mixed in with it. You can make some dog. Oh, see, that was a mistake right there. He dropped into him. That that lost the game right there. You do, you want to be behind with the IVs. You don't want to make that mistake. And look, he's got plenty of miners, so there's really no excuse that he he wasn't having enough production. It's the fact that he micro wrong. So that's a big mistake. Do not make that mistake by putting the IVs, running them into the tanks rather than having them behind something or in front of them shooting the missiles. Good game. Man. Yeah, but you see, this is going to be another year's revenge game. It's going to be on dry heat. I mean, a lot of people like doing this map over and over, so... I want to show you some mistakes that the Soviet can make this time, rather than the, focusing on the Allies. Well, actually, we do both, but focus on the Soviet. I mean, yeah, you stretch that Raider right there. Sometimes I'm, I'm afraid to put the Raider right there so he doesn't run up and snipe a tank off with this... Um, Rhino tanks. So anyway, it's in 2x fast forward. Moving to MCV, that's okay. Not a bad build. But he doesn't have the soy poise build. is a little bit better than his because it's got more early aggression. Early game aggression could kill the allies right away. Really right away. Especially if the allies make a mistake. If you got the early game pressure, you could come right away. So the mistake he's going to make this game... Is too many freaking battle labs. Does that make any sense? Too many battle labs. So trying to make a battle lab over and over and over when he's going to keep constantly shooting it down. And so many players make this mistake. So it's... It's almost kind of like, stop making a mistake, guys. And I hope this video makes pe at least like five people, you know, fixes this on five people. So, I mean, I'm not really showing the whole game. I'm just really just focusing on, you know, showing it in fast forward so you can see how the plane, what the planes do. And he's building up a chronosphere. Um, LA doesn't need a super big army. Um, like he does with the soy boy, the other guy. Um, you know, the good Soviets also. This, I'm not saying this guy's bad or anything. He's playing, but he's got the wrong strategy for this map. Trying to, you don't need an iron curtain to win. You could get the early game pressure going with the two way for it to do three minor builds and then build it into another game I mean into a late game a middle game and then a late game where um you're getting a third war factory and uh maybe even a fourth war factory you're spamming miners everywhere now he's looks like pink might try to go spy him and then he's gonna give up on that so he's gonna make another battle lab <laughs> and honestly this is in 2x fast forward meaning that like He's been trying for a long, twice as long as what you're seeing to try to get bad labs. I'm like, stop making a battle lab. You're not going to hold it versus Korea. Or if you wanted to say, like, I'm going to make seven flag cannons. Uh, sorry, not seven flag cannons, seven flag trucks. Maybe three flag cannons because seven flag cannons would be absolutely ridiculous and you would go broke. Try to stop it. That would be a good idea. But those three flag trucks are not going to stop it. And then he just chronos viewed, blew up the shit. Oh my god. So you notice a fast trader rather than another refinery or another war factory or something like that didn't get him a faster tank rush or a harder tank rush. And then going for that lab, I got blue up every time. And then the allies has got a chronosphere. I mean, really, what is this? And he's got the prism towers. And it seems like, you know, even if the Soviet is behind, you still had to defend very hard versus the Soviet, it seems like. Like, he made all the miners go over there. Was he trying to base walk him? I think he just messed around because obviously you could, st you you got the hell advantage. You got to stop. Oh, that was more of a distraction than anything. He got him with the <laughs> Kernis fuel over there. So now he's got eight planes. Eight planes is not necessary. Really, one plane is enough. He was trying to go for the MCB. I think when he's playing a little bit ahead, he's doing stuff that you normally want to do. 
like making the eight planes, that's a little bit risky because it is pretty expensive. Watch. If he flies directly over the MCV and shoots it from downward, it'll be better. So Soviet, I mean, all, he's, all he could really do is try to rush at this point. And the rush. <laughs> so I mean, the Soviet's got to try to rush. Oh, there, there you go. He's doing something. I mean, getting that war factor would have been good. He tried. That was a nice try, actually. Nice try. You got to try to do stuff. Oh, that's not bad right there. He's going to blow up all his shit. And he's got the conscripts of black. That's actually pretty good right there. Time is... Uh-oh. Oh, it looks like the Soviet might actually have a small chance. He's getting Cronus Reed and he's getting his plane shot down. Oh, imagine if Soviet won this game, lost the whole game and won. That would be pathetic. If the allies lost this, have all that shit. Does he have any air defense? Does he have any air to Oh, he has a Battle Fortress. I wasn't... Shit, I would get a Patriot Missile, dude. You're about to get, you're about to get your shit rocked if you fuck this up. He, could, he should put go right on the hill. Right on the hill. No, don't go right there. Oh, man. If you would run on that hill, he could have had... Oh, well, get your flag trucks. Oh, he actually would have had a chance if he would have brought the flag trucks right away. He would have had a good chance if he had brought the flag trucks. Oh, the Battle Fortress, the Battle Fortress, the Battle Fortress. Oh, crap. Wow. <laughs> wow, wow, wow. So, even if you're way ahead with Alex, you could still could lose. He almost lost at the end, sort of. Good game. So, we're gonna do one more game. Where we're in offense defense. And this game, he won for super weapons too fast. You should go for an all-out defense or counterattack versus a Soviet on this map. Because if it's a good Soviet, he's going to try to pressure you. If he goes one minor from War Factory, even two minus from War Factory, you know, that's going to give you a little breathing room for the first few minutes. But, you know, either way, you know, after he goes one minor from War Factory or rushes, or even two minus from War, like I was talking about a minute ago, the Soviet has to put the pressure on with multiple war factories. I mean, the only other way to try to win is to try to make a fast iron curtain, which is okay, but kind of bad. But, I mean, this, that would be a mistake, I think, because four planes would shoot him down. But what I think, um, I think making an iron curtain too quick is a bad idea. So I'm trying to conscript rush with dog rush him. So I don't know if he's going to be able to stop this. So he's got snipers, which is okay. The snipers are a good idea. That looked ahead. So, boom, boom, boom. Just conscripts, no pillboxes. He's gonna have three, four, five pillboxes. And he's gonna go on an all out defense. Even make Guardian GI. Guardian GIs. Building. That's a tongue twister when you're saying Guardian GI and you're thinking IFV at the same time you're a GG Guardian GI. No, I meant to say, yeah, just regular Guardian GIs and just have them sit there. Now, four planes, that's not a bad idea. I mean, if I did go for a lab, he would have been able to get it probably easily. But, he don't, he, he, he has a really, really delayed to the, for the, oh, he's got some IFVs. Nice, nice, nice. He's not doing bad with the IFVs. So what I think right there is he was going for a chronosphere, not a weather control device, and he canceled the chronosphere because he realizes he's going to die in one minute flat if he doesn't get some base defenses. Because you see there was no pillboxes coming up, and then you see a pillbox come up. I definitely think that he was going for a chronosphere and then canceled it. Okay, snipers are not a bad idea. Unit and he also could make some Guardian GIs because of the fact that I can't make Desolators against Snipers. Building. You can still try to make Desolators versus Snipers, it's hard to do, it's difficult, very difficult to do. And most of the time the Soviet doesn't even try. Unless he's going like, say like 5 and the flag truck still, you know, they all can't get shot instantly. 
But I like I like to give up trying to make a lot of infantry members of snipers. I mean, snipers are anti-infantry. That's the whole reason why you play like Great Britain is. Your infantry is going to beat their infantry very easily. I mean, you had to give up either America's paradrops or Korea's planes to get it. I mean, the opportunity cost is kind of high for snipers, a little too high. That's why a lot of people don't play Great Britain unless it's a team game. But here we go. I'm thinking about going in there, right through, trying to bulldoze them right through. They got a radar. Oh, I'm going to try to desolate him here. New rally point established. Is he a weather control device? He made a weather control device. I mean, that's okay. But the fact that even if he killed two warfighter dudes, he's not going to hit my tanks with it. I'm still going to have a lot of warfighter dudes. And I, and I seriously think he had a cornice on hold. Or or maybe in a weather control device. So like, I think my army is so damn big, I'm not really afraid of his, his defense, his puny defenses. See, he, if you would have had a second war factory instead of making a weather control device, don't even try to make. And that, that was the second war factory, but it didn't matter anymore. It doesn't matter anymore. You're practically dead in a minute. Get a promotion right there without killing that. Now it's practically over, and just so many war factories, and I just spam it as many as possible. It looks like he is dead. So, super weapons versus an all out rush. Not a good idea. Don't make the mistake. One, two.